Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, second uh, webinar in the tobacco webinar series. Um, this one is called New El Electronic Smoking Devices. What's the difference? And we're very fortunate to have four eminent expert speakers to raise the issues and questions around the whole issue of electronic smoking devices and to build on what was, I think, a very informative and helpful first webinar uh, in this uh, three part series. Um, the series is has been developed in consultation with ISA Philippines, this particular webinar. Uh, and I was also have to say my thanks to my colleague, Alha Maschikivska, uh, in Ukraine, who has put the whole thing together in consultation with colleagues uh, across Asia and internationally. And thank you very much for the contributors for giving their time and input uh, and for you as the audience uh, in giving your time to listen. Uh, as I say, my name is Jeff Lee. I'm the senior consultant for, for ISAP. Senior, I think, is the name because I'm just getting old. Um, but I've been involved in this field for a long time, but uh, would always open to new learning in what is a very new area of development. Um, we shouldn't forget that tobacco is a, a major issue in the whole issue of drug control and healthy uh, health and well-being. So we need to keep it on our agenda. I'm going to say very little because time pressures will be with us over the next hour and a half. And rather you listen to the experts and listen to me. So I'd like to uh, just uh, point out we will have four inputs. Uh, 15, 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So any questions you have, please uh, put them in the chat line and send them to us or on email, and uh, we can pick them up at the end of the session. Uh, our first uh, contributor today is Dr. Jonathan Folds. Uh, Dr. Folds is Professor of Public Health Sciences, Psychiatry and Behavioral Health at Penn State University College of, Men, uh, of Medicine. Um, Dr. Folds is a, a professor of public health sciences and psychiatry at Penn State and trained as a clinical psychologist at the University of Glasgow and obtained his PhD at the Institute of Psychiatry at the University of London. He spent most of his career developing and evaluating methods to help smokers beat their addiction to tobacco and he continues to involved in practice as well as research in, in treating addicted smokers uh, and teaching on smoking cessation and conducting research on tobacco and health at Penn State. Thank you, Dr. Bo uh, Dr. Folds, for your time. Uh, we look forward to hearing you. Over to you. Okay, good morning from Hershey, Pennsylvania. We're a town that was uh, originated to build a chocolate factory. You may have heard of Ch Hershey Chocolate. So I'm sitting in the building that you can see in, fr in front of you on this slide, which is the Cancer Institute at Penn State College of Medicine in Pennsylvania. Uh, I should just give you my disclosure before we really start. Uh, currently, mo almost all my funding is from the National Institute of Health. Uh, I've done in the past on consulting for pharmaceutical companies. And I don't do any paid work of any sort for tobacco or electronic cigarette manufacturers. So these are the main questions that I'm going to fairly briefly address. What are electronic cigarettes? What are the harms from electronic cigarettes? Do e-cigs help smokers to quit smoking? How addictive are they? And can e-cigs produce a public health benefit? That's the, I'm going to try and briefly address all of those questions. But I'm going to start by just talking very briefly uh, about something you've heard already, but it's about the harms to health from smoking. Because part of this discussion is about how does the health effects from electronic cigarettes or e-cigs compare to the health effects from cigarettes? And to understand that, we have to be clear about what is it about cigarettes that causes the serious health effects from cigarettes. 
So we all know that cigarettes cause cancer, and it's mainly from carcinogens in the cigarette smoke. One of them, one of the most famous ones, is called NNK. That's a potent lung carcinogen, and you can measure that in urine uh, by its main metabolite NNAL. And we can also compare the NNL concentrations in smokers with non-smokers and with e-cigarette users to get a sense of how much of that toxicant people are exposed to. So then you've got car cardiovascular disease, uh, things like heart attacks and strokes. Um, and these, the risks of these are increased from smoking largely via volatile gases in the smoke. Carbon monoxide is a good example. Uh, and, and it's the smoke and all its many constituents and chemicals that causes your platelets to get sticky. And uh, the CO, for example, replaces oxygen in your blood supply and means your heart has to do more, more work. And all of that is the thing that causes uh, heart attacks due to smoking. Again, it's the smoke that does it. Nicotine has a, has a role too. You know, smokers are probably about two to three times the risk of non-smokers of having a heart attack or a stroke. Um, and nicotine is probably about a, a, a 10 to 20 percent part of that extra risk. Um, then you've got chronic respiratory diseases, COPD. And here is some of the, it's the tar in, that, that comes with cigarette smoke that coats your lungs uh, and other specific chemicals like acrolein and nitric oxide. These are the things that cause the damage uh, to your lungs that uh, cause uh, long-term chronic respiratory problems. So smoking adversely affects virtually every organ in the body. In the United States, there's 450,000 premature deaths every year and 20 times as many, about 10 million serious illnesses every year in America caused by cigarette smoking. And cigarette smoke contains over 7,000 chemicals, including dozens of carcinogens. But people don't smoke for all of those chemicals. People only smoke for the psychopharmacological effects of nicotine. And my old PhD uh, supervisor and professor, Michael Russell, one of his famous quotes was, that if it was not for the nicotine and tobacco, tobacco smoke, people would be little more inclined to smoke than they are to blow bubbles. You know, blowing bubbles is fun as well. But we don't we don't do it 20 times a day for the rest of our lives because it doesn't give nicotine in a reinforcing manner. Let's talk about e-cigarettes. So it's a diverse group of devices. I guess the simplest thing to say is there's no such thing as an e-cig. Rather, there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of different devices um, all of them are characterized by a battery, which is a power supply, uh, a place to hold liquid. And when you press a button or take a puff, the battery sends electricity to a coil that, that connects with the liquid um, and creates an aerosol that can be inhaled. The other things that are in the e-cig are, are often flavorings, nicotine, and a few other additives. Uh, and all of that gets inhaled by the smoker or the e-cig user. Uh, and I've got down the bottom here some examples of names, uh, but the main point is that there's many different kinds, but they all work in the, a similar basic premise and mechanism. So these are examples of two of the early kinds. The one at the bottom is what we call a first generation uh, or SIGA-like. Uh, you notice there are no buttons and it's very small. It's the same size as a cigarette. And then the one at the top is a second generation. This is a bigger battery and it has a button to press. So the one at the bottom is breath activated. When you take up off that activates the, the heating. And the one at the top, you press a button before you take the puff. And that one became a bit more efficient at delivering nicotine, partly because of the higher battery power and partly because you can press the button to start heating the coil and getting the nicotine into the aerosol before you take a puff. And now you see there are many, many different varieties. Uh, and this, th these are kind of shown in these slides. And I'm sure you'll see many other slides to show what, what, what they look like, uh, you know, all different shapes and sizes. Um, so we tend to categorize the different classes in this manner. Sigalikes, the simple ones that are about the same size and shape as a, as a cigarette. Advanced, 
which have a button and a larger battery. Mods are the third generation, which can can you can put put them together in all kinds of different ways. Characteristically, they have more powerful batteries uh, and larger tanks to hold more liquid. And the final ones on the right are pod mods uh, or pod devices. Now they're not shown to size in the slides, but they're typically smaller, so small that you can almost hide it in your hand. And these are the ones that in the United States have caused a big increase in use by uh, teenagers because they're, they produce less aerosol and they're so small they can be held in your hand, even in a classroom without the teacher necessarily noticing. Then we've got the liquids. And again, all different kinds of flavors. Uh, they mainly have propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin as the, as the base, uh, different concentrations of nicotine, sometimes as a salt, which tends to make it less harsh to inhale, and all kinds of uh, flavorings, um, and some additives usually to kind of uh, act as a stabilizer. So how harmful are electronic cigarettes to health? Uh, first of all, we have to compare it to fresh air, like that would be for a non-smoker. Uh, how harmful is it for, for a non-smoker to start vaping? And secondly, we'll look at it compared to cigarettes. Now, for the first example, for the non-smoker, e-cigs contain propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, flavors, additives, nicotine, which is addictive, and heating can sometimes cause other chemicals to be formed if it heats too much. Uh, and these substances are all inhaled into the lungs. So to me, it's obvious that e-cigs are not harmless and that non-smokers, particularly children, should be strongly discouraged from trying e-cigarettes and it should be illegal to sell them to children uh, as, it, as it is just now in the United States for people under the age of 21. Um, but then when we come to compare uh, the harmful effects uh, from smoking, versus vaping alone versus nothing, um, then we it's, it's a tricky business because they've only been around for about 10 years. And so we don't really have good a good estimate of the long-term health effects. So our best estimate of the harmfulness is by comparing the concentration of toxicants that people absorb from cigarettes versus e-cigarettes versus fresh air. Uh, and I've just given an example here of, of one of the earlier studies that looked at the concentration of a number of carcinogens in the urine of smokers versus e-cigarette users versus non-users. And in that study, obviously smokers have a high levels of toxicants, including carcinogens in the urine, and the e-cigarette users had much, much lower levels. Um, not any different, in fact, from the level of carcinogens in the urine of non-smokers. So, so that gave that you know that was one of the early studies that kind of showed us that in terms of the chemicals that are being absorbed, e-cigarettes deliver far lower levels of harmful chemicals com compared with with cigarettes. The exception being nicotine, because some of them are capable of delivering nicotine similarly to a cigarette. Nicotine itself is not the, the chemical that does as much harm to health. Uh, it doesn't cause cancer, for example. It doesn't cause COPD, um, but it is the chemical that people smoke for. Um, so just, just to summarize some of the other chemicals that can be absorbed, we've talked about the main things, the propylene glycol, the glycerin, nicotine, and flavors. Um, but the heating can sometimes increase levels of some harmful toxicants from an e-cig, formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, acrylin. Um, the studies that have found kind of meaningful increases in these chemicals, though, have typically been laboratory studies that have not used the e-cigs in the way that the user typically typically uses it. So, for example, the, the you put it in a lab and you attach uh, uh, mecha mechanics to the e-cig in the lab to catch the chemicals that are coming out. And then you, you press the button and keep pressing it for a long time such that the liquid dries up and you end up with what you call dry vaping. And when that happens, so you've got the coil being heated but not being cooled by liquid, 
Uh, and so it, it essentially it, it almost gets to a temperature where it causes burning and degradation of the chemicals. Now that's not typical of how e-cigs are used. Uh, I guess an, an analogy would be that, you know, I don't know if any of you at home have a toaster. You know, you take bread and you pop it in the toaster. And usually in the United States and in the UK, the toasters, you have a dial from zero to 10. And you, according to how well toasted you would like it to be, um, most people go for something in the middle, like four or five. If you turn it up to nine or 10, you basically burn the toast. And, and burnt toast includes many of these harmful chemicals as well. Burnt, burnt organic material is, is bad for you also. So you could do a study just like that and turn it up to 10 and find that, that toasters produce toxicants in your bread. Well, no, that's not how people use them because it doesn't taste good that way. And e-cigs are the same. When, when somebody uh, overheats their coil or runs out of liquid, they can taste the difference and they, they change it. They stop pressing the button and they put in some more liquid. And so they, they generally don't get exposed to high levels of these other toxic chemicals. Um, having said that, you know, our group here at Penn State were one of the first group to, to identify the, you know, meaningful levels of harmful free radicals uh, can be measured in e-cigarette aerosols. So my colleague, uh, Dr. John Ritchie, who's in that office next door to me, his group were one of the first to, to demonstrate this. But subsequent studies have, show, have verified this but shown that even though there are free radicals emitted in the aerosols, just to briefly explain, although I'm not a chemist, free radicals are basically um, particles that have an extra electron, which means they're, they want to uh, kind of partner with other particles and cause chemical interactions. And those things uh, cause destabilization of cells uh, and, and potentially create new harmful chemicals. So they're generally thought to be potentially harmful uh, aspects of in, in chemistry. Um, and e-cigarettes have not have them, but generally at far lower levels than cigarettes, just like with the other chemicals that we've talked about. Now this slide, I hope you can see it, it's a bit of a busy slide, but this is from a, a large study in a representative sample. And each of these little boxes, the one on the left shows the concentration of the chemicals in cigarettes only smokers. Then the, one, the next one shows people who smoke and use e-cigarettes. And then the third one is e-cigarettes only. And then the, the fourth one to the right on each little square is people who are using no nicotine products whatsoever. And you can see if we go to, for example, the one at the top in the middle, and this is fairly typical of them, you can see that the two on the left show high concentrations. Um, up to 500. And this is NNAL. This is the metabolite of NNK, the potent lung carcinogen. But if you look to the third one, this is e-cigarettes only, far, far lower levels. And if, you know, not that, not that different from the never smokers to the right. And you see a similar pattern for, for very, very many chemicals that are toxicants that are produced by cigarettes, far lower levels from e-cigarettes on their own. But high levels, if somebody's a dual user, meaning somebody who smokes and uses e-cigarettes at the same time. So one of the key points here is that it really is important that for a, if a smoker wants to reduce the risk, that they switch completely over to e-cigarettes rather than doing both, which is, which is in all honesty is is a very common thing. Many many smokers, when they try try e-cigarettes, they end up using both for a period of time, uh, and it's important to be clear that that's not a very big step in the right direction. To really reduce your risks and your toxic and exposures, you really need to switch completely over to the e sex as shown in these slides. So cigarettes are obviously highly addictive. You already know this. Most people who ever smoke 60 cigarettes go on to become daily smokers for years. Uh, the middle, average middle-aged smoker has already made 20 serious attempts to quit. And when an average smoker decides that they're gonna to try to quit, there's about a 95% chance that one year later they'll still be smoking. So, and when an average smoker uh, tries to quit, uh, uh, but with medication and counseling, you know, they get evidence-based treatment, 
then there's an 80% chance they'll still be smoking a year later. You know, like there's only about a 20% quit rate, even with good evidence-based treatment. Um, so so the, the problem we have is that cigarettes are highly addictive. Uh, people have great difficulty quitting. Most people take many attempts. And the idea is that some people may be better off switching to a much less harmful product, at least for a period of time, uh, in order to get off cigarettes. Now, this bit that we're talking about now is, is looking at the nicotine absorption from different products. This is a study that we published a couple of years ago where we compare the nicotine absorption from the bottom gray line is people using first generation e-cigs like the Sigalikes I showed you before. The next line, which goes a bit higher, is people using advanced e-cigs with a larger battery and a button. And then the, the next button to the left is cigarette smokers. So you, you can see that, generally speaking, cigarettes deliver faster, higher amounts of nicotine than e-cigarettes, generally speaking. But remember what we said before, that e-cigarettes are very variable. There are many different kinds. Um, so the net effect for smokers is they become a lifelong addict. So this is the net result. This is a man who's got Burger's disease, a severe form of peripheral vascular disease, almost exclusively caused by smoking. Uh, and his brother ended up rigging up a coat hanger so that he could keep smoking despite having four limbs amputated. So this is the kind of thing we're trying to avoid. Um, uh, so another way of looking at this is to is to come is to get a group of uh, exclusive e-cigarette smokers who were ex-cigarette smokers and get them to fill in questionnaires that that assess their dependence or their addiction level. So we did this a few years ago with a large group of over three and a half thousand uh, e-cigarette users who were former smokers and asked them a bunch of questions about their addiction level. And you can see that the black line here is the percent saying yes, uh, who were e-cigarette users and the, the, the hash line are, are cigarette smokers. So for example, do you ever have strong cravings to smoke e-cigarettes or use e-cigarettes? 35% of e-cigarette users said yes. 93% of, sm of smokers said yes. And that was true for all these items. And th that was an early study, but there have now been numerous studies published using different kinds of designs, showing the same thing. That although e-cigarettes can be addictive, and generally speaking, I would say they are addictive, on average, when you compare e-cigarette use with uh, cigarette use, people who use only e-cigs seem to say that they're less addicted than they were to cigarettes, or or people or or just have a lower rating on the on any measure. This was another study that we published from the PATH trial, showing a, a kind of similar finding. Um, this was a large representative sample of of exclusive cigarette smokers and e-cigarette users. So I'm, I'm partly giving you my opinions here, but what I would like to do is focus on the main place I would suggest you go to to find out more, which is a very thorough review from the National Academy of Science, Engineering and Medicine on the public health effects of e-cigarettes. This is the summary. While e-cigarettes are not without health risks, they're likely to be far less harmful than combustible tobacco cigarettes. E-cigarettes contain fewer numbers and lower levels of toxic substances than conventional cigarettes, although the long-term health effects are not yet clear. Uh, they also said using e-cigarettes may help adults who smoke combustible tobacco cigarettes to quit smoking, but more research is needed. Uh, and since then, and, and also they said that there is evidence the young people who, who use e-cigarettes seem to be more likely to also go on and become a smoker, although it's not clear whether that's a causal effect. Briefly, just show you this slide that since that 2018 uh, big review, this is a study by Peter Hayek, uh, a big randomized trial in the UK, randomizing people who wanted to quit smoking to either e-cigs or nicotine replacement, both with counselling. And the, find, the main finding was that the e-cigarette users were almost twice as likely to succeed in quitting smoking a year later. So that seems to kind of uh, prove that e-cigarettes can help smokers to quit. So I'm just giving you the, the contact details for, for that particular 
the big report. Uh, and there was also a big US Surgeon General's report in 2016 that's, that's worth looking at. So this is my summary. If you're not currently a smoker, don't start using nicotine, any nicotine or vaping product. If you are a smoker, then switching completely to an e-cig will likely be much less harmful to your health than smoking. But remember that there are evidences better for, for other medicines like nicotine replacement or vernacular. Um, if you've already successfully quit smoking by switching completely to e-cigs, that's positive. And when you're ready, you should wean yourself off the e-cigs. And overall, I believe e-cigs, if appropriately regulated, can produce a public health benefit by replacing the cigarette industry completely. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Dr. Folds, thank you very much indeed. Um, a very interesting opening start of posing a lot of questions um, and a lot of interesting science. As Dr. Folds himself said, this is relatively new. We haven't had the time to put all the uh, in research together over a long-term basis, but some very interesting questions being posed about health uh, and about what the scientific evidence is beginning to show us. So we really appreciate that as our opening gambit from Dr. Folds. Can I quickly move on uh, and introduce and welcome uh, Dr. Shishani, Dr. Kawab Shishani, uh, who is uh, the Associate Professor at Washington State University. Uh, I'll say a little other than having looked at Dr. Shishani's uh, CV, uh, obviously very active in the field of tobacco, uh, both in research and practice, and internationally um, very uh, active, uh, producing a whole range of uh, uh, papers uh, and research documents on, on the issue around smoking. So thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Shani, for joining us. Uh, we look forward to hearing your input on health risks of e-cigarettes. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for the introduction. Uh, it is my pleasure uh, this morning to join you all uh, and be part of this uh, wonderful uh, panel. So in my short talk, I will be uh, talking about the health risks of use of electronic cigarettes. We know that uh, tobacco products are effective nicotine delivery systems, and we all know that nicotine is a powerful addictive drug and it comes from um, tobacco plant. Cigarettes and electronic cigarettes um, are engineered to deliver nicotine in different ways. Uh, to your left, uh, the conventional cigarettes, tobacco leaves uh, undergo a drying process. Dried leaves are used to manufacture cigarettes. During the drying process, tobacco-specific nitrosamines are, uh, are formed, and these nitrosamines are known to be carcinogenic. To your left, it's the e-cigarette nicotine, which is extracted from also dried tobacco leaves and added to it um, vegetable glycerin and uh, um, propylene glycol, both they, they do the purpose of uh, holding them to flavoring and uh, mixing ingredients, uh, having them mixed well together. Um, there are different types of nicotine the electronic cigarettes devices can use. Initially, all vape devices used uh, pre-based uh, nicotine. Uh, many of the newest devices use what is called uh, salt-based nicotine. So the pre-based nicotine is the same type of nicotine found in air-dried tobacco used in cigars, pipes, uh, combustible cigarettes. Uh, free base nicotine is directly extracted from tobacco. It has a pH of, of around uh, eight or, and, or eight and a half. So it's more like a basic. Uh, this pH matters because of the harshness when something has a pH different from the uh, humid belly, it feels a uh, harsh or irritating or barren sensation in the back of the throat. So many factors uh, used to cover the harshness of uh, free base nicotine with adding additives like menthol, which creates a uh, cooling effect. 
So the other nicotine, the newest uh, one is the salt-based uh, nicotine and it emerged in the last uh, three to four years and became popular in 2017-18. It has been treated, so this uh, salt-based nicotine has been treated with acids, which makes the pH of the nicotine uh, solution more acidic, closer to that of the human body. Uh, that means that you can have higher concentrations of nicotine while having a smooth bone. So first, I just wanted to point out why it's becoming so popular and it's almost an epidemic uh, worldwide. Uh, E-cigarettes are more appealing than cigarettes for a variety of reasons, including cost, choice of different flavors, and use and impact of uh, social media. There are also different perceptions among electronic cigarette users, including both adolescents and adults. So the former group may use them because um, of the sense of fashion associated with this novel device, and later might intend to quit uh, conventional or combustible cigarettes by switching to e-cigarettes. Um, electronic cigarettes also are available uh, for online purchases uh, with the case of, with the ease of I click and can be uh, widely seen in shopping malls, kiosks, which is commonplace for adolescents to spend much of their uh, free time. So uh, this ease of purchase and availability has made electronic cigarettes easily uh, accessible to young. Um, there are many concerns with vaping. And here at Washington uh, State Control uh, Poison Control Center, we receive uh, every year hundreds of calls because of the exposure to uh, nicotine. And the routes of exposure are um, inhalation, uh, ingestion, and absorption. So to your left are the mild to moderate symptoms that are reported, and these are based on the smaller doses consumed. They include upset stomach, dizziness, headache, tremor, high rate, uh, high heart rate, pale skin, high blood pressure. But uh, for those who uh, consumed it at much higher doses, the symptoms were much more severe and they included seizures, confusion, weakness, lower, uh, low heart rate, low blood pressure, and difficulty uh, with breathing. So for uh, kids, the, uh, the burden is even much more uh, potent. There is a great a deal of range in dose of and concentration of the uh, various components of e juice. However, because of the toxicity, one uh, teaspoon of a 36 milligram per milliliter of e juice is lethal nicotine dose for a nine kilogram uh, baby. The fact alone, uh, this fact alone is highly concerning, which is uh, compounded by the fact that flavored e-juices uh, often look appealing to youth, smell sweet, and even taste sweet. In fact, that I think is one of the main uh, uh, marketing tactics that makes uh, youth uh, want to uh, use this type of uh, devices. So the uh, vaping, uh, the aerosol, that's where many of the dangerous uh, chemicals uh, that enter the body and cause harm. Um, so aerosol from electronic cigarettes have higher concentrations of ultra fine particles. And these particles are concerning because they are uh, so small, they bypass all our body uh, natural defense systems and travel deep into uh, the lungs, all the way uh, down to the tiny alveoli. And because of the ultrafine particles' ability to travel so deep into our lungs, they cause short-term and long-term respiratory and cardiovascular uh, health problems. So nicotine is also one of the chemicals that are present in the aerosol. And regardless of the product, it's, and nicotine is one of the most addictive substances in existence. Uh, most nicotine, <coughs> products deliver nicotine to the brain within seconds of use. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This rapidly increases dopamine levels, which links with the brain reward system. In other words, repeating the action that caused it to feel good. So the increase in uh, dopamine along with the stimulating effect of nicotine generally causes other positive effects, including 
pleasure, decreased stress, anxiety. In fact, this is one of the things that often smokers uh, say that you know it helps them with. It modulates smokers' mood and it improves concentration. Over time, smokers build tolerance, meaning that it takes more nicotine to get the same effect. And they continue to use nicotine to avoid withdrawal symptoms. These withdrawal symptoms are uh, one of the main reasons for smokers to relapse and go back to smoking after they quit. Withdrawal symptoms include irritability, depressed mood, restlessness, and anxiety. <coughs> So before we move on to nicotine, I wanted to dedicate this slide to youth-specific uh, concern. That concern is harm to uh, adolescent brain development. The brain continues to uh, develop through the age of 25, and nicotine harm brain development during critical period when the brain is still vulnerable. In adolescence, nicotine use is associated with lasting cognitive and behavioral impairment, including effects on working memory, attention, mood, and behavior. Ramifications from these effects can truly be life-altering. As well, all of those things are easily important for a kid to do well in school, stay safe, and healthy. Tree juice comes with a variety of flavors. In fact, these are the things that makes uh, youth want to, uh, to start using uh, e cigarette because of all these options available to them in terms of flavors. And flavors can lead to oxidative stress and inflammation of the lungs, both of which can contribute to lung uh, disease. And I have here some of these flavors that are uh, not harmful when consumed but they are harmful when they are inhaled. So these are some of them. They are uh, FDA approved, but to be consumed in uh, food. So also one of the main ingredients in e-juice is vegetable uh, glycerin. e liquid that have higher percentage of vegetable glycerin generates uh, denser, thicker vape clouds, than vape juice with a higher propylene glycol percentage. In fact, you know, if you Google uh, YouTube, you will find hundreds of videos about kids showing the, the types of clouds they can make from uh, using e-cigarette. And it's also, I think, an effective target uh, uh, marketing technique used by the uh, tobacco industry. One study examined the role of increasing the e-liquid vegetable glycerin uh, content on desire to smoke. Uh, e-cigarette and cigarettes. So the data showed that uh, increasing the e-liquid content of vegetable glycerin enhanced the uh, size and uh, visibility of the exhaled aerosol clouds. It evoked a greater increase in smoking desire and a more sustained increase in electronic cigarette desire relative to lower, uh, low levels of uh, vegetable glycerin fuel. Second-hand exposure is another concern with, uh, just like with uh, cigarettes. So if you're near a, a person breathing out vapor from e-cigarettes, you generally breathe in the same air that they are exhaling and can inhale the same vapor. And this is second-hand exposure to aerosol vapor. One study uh, actually found a correlation between exposure to secondhand aerosol and an increased risk in asthma attacks among those who have asthma. Also, third hand, uh, expo third -hand sp uh, smoke exposure is uh, residual nicotine uh, and other chemicals uh, left on indoor surfaces uh, by uh, vape aerosol or uh, tobacco smoke. And people are exposed to these chemicals by touching contaminated surfaces. <laughs> there are many e-juice products in the market that, say, that are labeled as uh, zero milligram nicotine, but to what extent that is a true claim? 
So a study in 2018 looked at a series of e-juices that claimed to have zero milligram of nicotine. Of the 35 samples tested, over 90% contained measurable amounts of nicotine. In fact, four samples co uh, contained over 20 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. Even in well-designed, easy-to-read labels, there is a chance that there are still uh, misleading products. A big concern is about uh, vaping uh, being as a gateway to uh, other uh, use other uh, tobacco products. So in one recent study, ninth grade uh, students using electronic cigarettes were three times more likely than their non-electronic uh, cigarette using peers to have started using some other forms of tobacco over the course of the year where they were followed up. 12th grade uh, students were even uh, more likely, they were four times more likely to uh, use e-cigarettes. Uh, according to the National Academies of Sciences report that Dr. Pauls uh, uh, pointed out in his uh, presentation, the correlation between electronic cigarettes use and smoking is strong and it goes in both uh, directions. So both can be risk factor to starting the other tobacco product. So COVID-19 hit us badly last year and still we're living with the impact of it worldwide. One study assessed whether new cigarette and electronic cigarette use are associated with COVID-19 symptoms, testing and diagnosis. So more than 4,000 participants between the ages 15, uh, 13 and 24 were surveyed uh, online in last year. Uh, among those who were dual users, meaning that they were using electronic cigarettes and conventional cigarettes in the past 30 days, they were five times more likely to experience COVID-19 symptoms, they were more likely to receive COVID testing, and they were even more likely to be diagnosed with COVID-19. So what we know is that vaping causes harm to the lungs, leaving lung, uh, lungs inflamed, fragile, and susceptible to infection. In addition, tobacco use has been proven to harm immune system and airway lining cells that contain acidia on their surfaces, which are our essential defense, uh, defenders against, uh, against um, viruses like COVID-19. Uh, without them working properly, the lungs are more vulnerable and they are set up for uh, being at risk of more severe complications from infection. So electronic cigarettes are a recent phenomena. Therefore, uh, there is a lack of uh, many long-term uh, studies that can identify future health risks associated with e-cigarettes. So here I'm sharing with you a meta-analysis of epidemiological studies on the association of electronic cigarette use with asthma and with COPD. So the, uh, the analysis included 50 15 asthma studies and nine COPD studies and the conclusions. The study found that there was a strong uh, statistical association of electronic cigarette use and uh, respiratory disorders. Um, more, uh, they found also psycho cytotoxic effects, DNA damage comparable to that for cigarettes, cellular stress and cytotoxicity and increased inflammatory potential. And I will end here. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Dr. Shishani, can I thank you very much for that presentation? Very interesting. Um, issues for us to think about and consider uh certainly in the light of dr folds one of the interesting things about research to me is that the conflict that comes from research where we can get different indications different views and trying to find out where truth lies is always the challenge i think for all of us and and particularly the research community but i think some fascinating inputs for us to consider 
uh, in this issue and of course uh, that issue of nicotine is, is is central to to this debate and how much that is at the center of uh, the harm that uh, even vaping and, and e cigarettes can cause. Um, I'd like to move on now to present uh, Dr. Harry Nguroho. Um, Dr. Nguroho is um, a addiction medicine, uh, uh, sorry, addiction medicine physician uh, who works with addiction, addiction medicine training working for the narcotic board of the republic of indonesia since 2011. Uh, eight years experience in the national drug treatment and rehabilitation center as a physician and two years experience working in the drug policy area at the nnb headquarters uh, dr negroho is actively involved in the non-government organization issues of prevention treatment and research uh, and particularly focusing on tobacco addiction, addiction through his work with the Green Crescent in Indonesia and the Institute of Mental Health Addiction and Neuroscience in Jakarta. Dr. Negrao, thank you for giving your time to be with us today. Um, the topic for Dr. Negrao is the potential harm of e-cigarettes and vaping uh, for an alternative to cigarette smoking. Thank you very much. Over to you. Yeah, can you see my slide? Okay, uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, good evening from Indonesia. Okay, yeah, uh, good evening from Indonesia. Uh, my name is uh, Hari, you can call me Hari, and uh, this evening I will talk about the potential harm of uh, electronic cigarette. But I believe Dr. Falk and Dr. Sishani uh, have been covered uh, some of my presentation today. So uh, in this presentation, I will more focus on about uh, vaping drugs. So uh, before I start my presentation, I disclose that I do not receive any sponsorship, grant or fund or salary from a pharmaceutical, tobacco or electronic cigarette company. I'm a staff of Indonesian government agency and I got uh, I get salary from uh, this agency, uh, National Narcotic Board, uh, the Republic of Indonesia. And uh, Dr. Fall also told us about the evolution of uh, a cigarette. So you can see here uh, there is an evolution of uh, electronic cigarette. Uh, in the first generation, it it is uh, it was like a disposable e cigarette. So you can uh, refill or recharge uh, this device. So just uh disposable when uh, uh the, the 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 liquid or the nicotine uh, uh running out so and then uh coming uh there is a coming of uh, the next generation of uh, uh electronic cigarette that can be uh, refilled or uh that can be recharged and then uh there is something there is some uh evolution about the, the tank or the mode and uh, the uh, fourth generation uh, of electronic cigarette like now it's it's more uh, smaller uh, than it, it's like a, a USB stick and then uh, yeah it's it's very easy to conceal or to carry and uh, we can see here uh, the anatomy of electronic cigarette so uh, there is a cartridge uh, atomizer and then uh, the sensor and also the battery so uh, we can see also the evolution of uh, the tank and uh, of uh, and also uh, the uh, liquid. So uh, in the first generation of cigarette, uh, some people they 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 unsatisfied with this device, so they try to make modification of this uh, device. They make a modification uh, in the coils to uh, produce like a thicker cloud and then uh, they also uh, modify the batteries uh, and then uh, they also try to modify the uh, nicotine liquid so they want to experience uh, different nicotine strengths and then uh, because of uh, in the first generation uh, it can be it can be uh, refilled so they try to modify uh, to refill with the uh, 
a cheaper uh, product of uh, liquid uh, nicotine. And they also try to mix with the other substance like a uh, flavor liquid and also uh, the other uh, drugs like uh, THC or uh, CBD. And uh, as uh, Dr. Folk mentioned before, uh, there is uh, some uh, report or consensus from uh, National Academy of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine about the public health consequences of uh, electronic cigarette. And then I will uh, more focus on uh, the conclusion 5.1, 5.2, and uh, 14.1 that state uh, yeah, electronic cigarette uh, contain some uh, potentially uh, toxic substance. And uh, in the conclusion 14.1, uh, uh, there is a con conclusive evidence that electronic cigarette devices can explode and cause burn. Uh, because of uh, yeah the poor uh, quality of the battery or uh, the 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 consumer of this uh, electronic cigarette they store the battery improperly or uh, they make like a modification uh, on this device and then uh, the other concern is about uh, vaping drugs because uh, some uh, people with uh, people who are using drugs. Uh, maybe uh, thinking about uh, how to uh, uh, use uh, drugs uh, 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 and, and, uh, to, to reduce the harm. So they try to, uh, and, and they, they see uh, LC guard as, uh, uh, as an alternative to use drugs. So uh, they think that uh, inhal uh, inhalation, uh, inhalation of drugs is uh, safer than uh, rather than uh, the traditional uh, route of uh, the use of drugs. So uh, it can uh, vaping drugs. It uh, can be uh, do by uh, yeah vaping uh, uh, liquid that containing drugs, or they use like uh, oils or waxes, uh, and then uh, uh, put on. Uh, this device and then uh, vaporized and then they they use uh, the drugs. So uh, some studies uh, show us that uh, cannabis is uh, frequently used uh, in the vaping drugs and then uh, the other drugs like uh, MDMA and then uh, synthetic catenone, uh, uh, cocaine and synthetic cannabinoid also uh, being used uh, using uh, this uh, vaping uh, devices and. Uh, the other, uh, the reason of uh, vaping drugs uh, from the study, uh, because uh, they see uh, their friends uh, doing it, and then uh, they also uh, want to uh, like uh, avoid uh, detection, uh, particularly uh, in the country like in Indonesia that uh, has a, a very very hard uh, drug policy. So they, they try to avoid the detection because uh, yeah uh, this this uh, device uh, usually uh, odorless or uh, maybe uh, smokeless if they try to use like uh, cannabis uh, or THC oil so they they uh, it it can be like uh, in the still uh, still mode uh, of uh, using drugs so uh, the question is. Uh, does uh, the device to consume uh, THC or CBD uh, is similar to uh, the device to consume uh, liquid nicotine? So the answer is uh, this device is relatively uh, same and uh, some uh, electronic cigarette uh, that uh, uh, some electronic cigarette they, they, they have uh, like a uh, some very similar device uh, to a uh, device that uh, to consume uh, uh, THC or CBD, but uh, when they uh, consume it with this uh, device, uh, usually uh, uh, this device produces like a smaller cloud, and uh, even though uh, it's, it still smells like uh, uh, cannabis, but with uh, mixed with the, like uh, the smell of uh, some uh, fruits, maybe. 
and uh, the other uh, side effect of uh, using electronic cigarette uh, is uh, like a lung injury. So in 2019, I believe in the United States, uh, there was uh, an outbreak of uh, uh, lung injury due to uh, using uh, electronic cigarette or uh, vaping. But uh, the study shows us that uh, the uh, the, the, the cause of uh, lung injury actually not uh, the liquid nicotine, but uh, due to vitamin E acetate. Uh, this, this vitamin E acetate uh, used as a additive substance for the HC liquids. It's it's uh, like uh, to uh, make uh, this liquid uh, thicker. Uh, and then uh, from the study also uh, detected that uh, patient who experience uh, this lung injury uh, from uh, the, their uh, burn for alveolar uh, uh, yeah, uh, so for, uh, from the analysis, uh, uh, there are there was uh, like a THC detected, or uh, some people also reporting that they they use a THC product, and then some uh, uh, this. This product uh, sometimes they bought from like a black market or illegal market, and the other concern is uh, because uh, due to the the hype of uh, like a uh, marijuana use for for uh, medicinal use or recreational use in some countries, uh, so many people try to use uh, like a CBD uh, liquid uh, for vaping, but uh, uh some study uh found that uh this uh, liquid of cbd uh not only contain cbd but also uh synthetic cannabinoid like uh, 5f adb and also uh cough medicine like uh, dextromethorphan so it, it can be uh harmful to our uh organ or our uh health so what about uh, Indonesia's situation of electronic cigarettes? So currently we have no certain regulation about uh, electronic cigarettes. And uh, in Indonesia, uh, vaping drugs become uh, popular. And then uh, uh, we call it in here uh, uh, when people want to use uh, uh, drugs by vaping, uh, usually they use like a uh, synthetic uh, cannabinoid or uh, maybe like a liquid THC, so they call it a uh, synthate. And then uh, we found, uh, my office found actually uh, some uh, liquid contain uh, uh, new psychoactive substances, and uh, most people uh, bought uh, this liquid uh, from uh, online marketplace or uh, social media. So. Uh, the most common reason uh, to use uh, vaping drugs in Indonesia it actually is uh, to avoid uh, detection because uh, it's uh, odorless and and some some people uh, feel like uh, they difficult to get cannabis so they try to uh, get the alternative to use uh, like a synthetic uh, cannabinoid uh, by uh, uh, using uh, electronic cigarettes. And also because uh, their friends also use uh, like a syn uh, synthetic cannabinoid. So uh, some of my patients, uh, they experience like a uh, strong hallucination after they use uh, uh, synthetic cannabinoid uh, using uh, electronic cigarette. And also uh, they also experience headache, uh, nausea, and also some people, they uh, feel like a blackout. And uh, this is a uh, uh, liquid e cigarette that containing drugs in Indonesia. So uh, dominant, predominantly, uh, this liquid uh, contain like a synthetic cannabinoid such as uh, 5 ADB or uh, 5 F MB MBPK. But uh, the other drugs also uh, coming up like a synthetic cannabinoid. Uh, like uh, for CMC and Indonesia, uh, it's sold uh, under uh, the brand uh, Blue Sapphire. And also we found uh, THC, liquid THC, uh, liquid CBD 
and also uh, liquid uh, vitamin type stimulant uh, like a, uh, MDMA, uh, liquid MDMA uh, with the brand uh, of uh, liquid illusion and also uh, liquid methamphetamine. So this is what uh, we found in Indonesia. So uh, this is a synthetic catenone, uh, liquid synthetic catenone. And then uh, this is uh, liquid synthetic cannabinoid. And yeah, this is uh, still uh, uh, liquid synthetic cannabinoid. So uh, my conclusion is uh, modification of electronic cigarette device can, uh, can be dangerous, particularly when they modify the batteries and also uh, the liquid that, uh, that being used uh, uh, to uh, to uh, that being used, and then uh, evaluate can be the dangerous effect of using liquid uh, uh, liquid electronic cigarettes that contain uh, vitamin uh, vitamin E acetate, and then uh, particularly in Indonesia we need a specific regulation about electronic cigarette, and we yeah should educate people about the potential harm of uh, using uh, electronic cigarette to consume drugs. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me just get my webcam. Harry, thank you very much indeed for that uh, input. Um, I think you raise very important questions about when we're talking about e-cigarettes and vaping. Uh, how far are we talking about regulation on uh, what uh, becomes that e-cigarette and how it's put together and what's in it and what's used? rather than the uh, the side of using what some might say safe e-cigarettes, are there such things, or is a, the major issue, as you, you've suggested in your country, is often about it's how they're produced and how they're not regulated in terms of how they're put together and the batteries and the liquids, etc. So an interesting question raised there. Can I move on to our final uh, speaker? Uh, who is uh, Dr. Um, Elizabeth, sorry, Eduardo uh, Dorotheo uh, from the Philippines. Um, Dr. Um, Dorotheo is uh, Executive Director for the Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance uh, and has uh, spoken and written uh, a substantial amount on this issue and he would like to make an input uh, on the issue of electronic smoking devices, policy recommendations and pitfalls. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Dorothea, for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee. So, thank you for this invitation. And before we go to the actual policy, implications. Um, let's look at uh, some of the evidence. So I'll be reiterating some of the points that have been made by previous speakers. Next slide, please. I, as mentioned, I'm Executive Director of the Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance um, and have no conflicts of interest, commercial or otherwise, to disclose. The next slide, please. So um, Professor Folds uh, actually quoted earlier uh, Dr. Michael Russell, uh, a British psychologist who in 1976 actually said people smoke for the nicotine but die from the tar. Um, Dr. Russell is a psychologist who proposed uh, a theoretical low tar, high nicotine cigarette as a way of reducing harm um, from cigarette use. He collaborated with British American Tobacco on developing two of their safer cigarette studies. Um, eventually, the industry you know, decided that there was no such thing as a safe cigarette. Um, and there was also some work done by Dr. Russell with R.J. Reynolds on a study of its initial heated tobacco product in the 1980s called Premier. So these are not exactly new products, but they've been experimented on for decades already. And Dr. Russell also espoused cigarette filters 
as a, a way to reduce the smoking risk, which we now know is not the case. Um, cigarette filters do not reduce the harm. Um, next slide, please. So electronic nicotine delivery systems, or ENDS, and that includes e-cigarettes, and heated tobacco products, or HTPs, are marketed on the premise that they're not combusted or they're not burned. And the industry uh, in recent years claims that it is now transforming towards a smoke-free future, claiming its uh, new products have no combustion and therefore produce no tar, no ash, and no smoke. And this makes them 90 to 95% less harmful than cigarettes. Of course, you'll note that they say smoke-free, but not tobacco-free. Next slide. So clearly, the industry is co-opting the term smoke-free to dissociate its new products from clearly harmful tobacco products, which are cigarettes. And there's also the term of vaping, uh, which is also used similarly, um, given the innocuous um, concept of water vapor. Next slide. But in reality, um, what we see is, you know, what we know is a vapor is the gas form of a liquid such as when water is boiled and turns into water vapor. But both tobacco smoke and emissions from electronic smoking devices, um, whether ANDs or HTPs, they create aerosols, um, which are suspensions of liquid and sometimes solid particles in a gas. So at this point, let me mention, um, I think it was also mentioned by one of our earlier speakers, the risk of uh, COVID transmission because these are aerosols and people take off their masks to smoke or vape, um, and there's also hand-to-mouth movement and there's sharing of devices and products, there is an increased risk of uh, COVID transmission. So just to point that out in relation to aerosols and the whole uh, aerosolization concept around COVID. So next slide. Let's... Uh, look at um, the claims of reduced health uh, health harms. Okay. Um, previous speakers have touched on this, so I will go quickly um, through a bit of history. Uh, next slide. As early as 1958, a Philip Morris scientist had already bet that the first company to produce a cigarette claiming a substantial reduction in tars and nicotine would take the market. And all the companies introduced cigarette filters to give smokers this false reassurance that these were safer products. And we now know that these filters really do nothing to reduce the risk of health harms. Next slide. So fast forward to today, the industry claims there's no combustion with its new products. But, you know, I, I question this because I look at these photos of e-cigarettes and clearly we show, we see that something has burned. Um, this uh, may not be always the case, but it can happen, especially with sweet flavors, vegetable glycerin, high wattage, and that's really you know up to each uh, user. And also intense vaping can cause this. Next slide. With heated tobacco products, we see similar charring of this ICOS heat stick. So it's a small stick of uh, tobacco that's plugged into an electronic device to heat the tobacco. Next slide. And this is also from the internet, uh, users of ICOS showing how to clean uh, the product after it's used. And clearly there's um, some burned tobacco in there. Next slide. So even if we presume that there is no combustion, uh, the mixing and heating of ingredients in the e-juice uh, for e-cigarettes creates a toxic chemical aerosol. Um, I don't think this is denied by any of uh, those who use cigarette e-cigarettes or even their makers. Um, but what they don't often say is that the content of the aerosol is quite similar to the toxic aerosol emitted by cigarettes. Um, even if tobacco is not an ingredient of these uh, ends or electronic cigarettes. Um, the studies do show that the concentration of toxins is lower, um, sometimes many times lower than in cigarettes, and this is the basis for claims of reduced harm. Next slide. 
um, this paper, uh, if we were to think about, you know, um, what comes in HTP aerosols, um, the manufacturers say there's no tar. Uh, but regardless of whether there is combustion or not, this paper on the chemistry uh, shows that HTPs actually do emit tar. Uh, and it's less tar, but definitely it's not no tar. Okay, next slide. So let's say there really is um, a lot you know, of reduction in the exposure to toxins. The question really is, is this, does this equate to reduced harm? And I would say it doesn't. Okay? Just as smoking socially intermittently or smoking a little, just one cigarette or up to four cigarettes a day, have been proven to still be quite harmful to health. So simply put, I, I referred to this as a, a little poison is still poison. Okay. Next slide. And even Philip Morris uh, stated as much in about ICOS, its own product, a heated tobacco product, in its documents submitted to the US FDA. Uh, it says on the slide, it has not been demonstrated that switching to the ICO system reduces the risk of developing tobacco-related diseases compared to smoking cigarettes. I don't think you can say it clearer than that. Okay, next slide. To illustrate, this is maybe the earliest case of lung injury from e-cigarette use reported in 2012, okay, many years before the uh, epidemic uh, that happened in the U.S. in 2019, a lot of which is related to vitamin E acetate. Um, next slide. The this paper, um, more recently, um, reports that the e-cigarette induced lung injury in a patient who had not used uh, vitamin acetate um, for THC vaping actually developed later chronic lung injury. So there's implication now for long-term injury from use of these products and devices. Next slide. And for HTPs, uh, heated tobacco products, uh, this is a case, uh, similar report of lung injury from 2016 in Japan following use of a heated tobacco product. And ICOS was launched in Japan in 2014 um, exclusively. And Japan has a weird uh, bit of legislation. They don't allow um, e-cigarettes that contain nicotine, but they allow heated tobacco products to be sold. So we know that uh, this is purely from heated tobacco products. Um, the injuries there. Next slide. Um, in 2017, a U.S. teen was reported to be suing Juul, um, the largest uh, e-cigarette maker in the U.S., for having developed a massive stroke caused by his Juul addiction. Um, Juul contains nicotine salts. They were the first company to market nicotine salts, which are much more addictive than free-based nicotine, as mentioned by an earlier speaker. So it's not just lung injury. Um, there are other consequences of using these products. Next slide. And uh, quite uh, you know, um, stark, if we look at how Juul was introduced to teens, so we had a teen who developed a stroke, and yet when it was uh, promoted among teens, uh, here we see some ninth graders testifying in a hearing in the US that they were told by the company that it was totally safe for them to use these products. Okay, next slide. So if we look at nicotine, um, because the tar obviously is harmful, uh, nicotine also is not really benign. Um, it, it causes addiction, and I won't preach to the crowd here. You all know how addictive nicotine is. Um, the cardiovascular effects are well documented, and that's been discussed also by earlier speakers. Um, and you could also look at this uh, 2015 paper, which I've cited at the bottom of the slide uh, by Mishret Al, which provides a good review of nicotine's harmful effects um, on the human body. Uh, various uh, health systems, um, bodily systems are adversely affected. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the tobacco industry deliberately designs its products to exploit the addictiveness of nicotine. So they say they can regulate fairly precisely the level of nicotine. Next slide. 
And in the ASEAN region, many youths are already addicted to both regular cigarettes and e-cigarettes. Um, my country, the Philippines, is on the top for e-cigarettes and number two for cigarette, uh, regular cigarette use among teens aged 13 to 15. Uh, I'm very sad to report that. Um, next slide. And among e-cigarette users, a study done a couple of years ago showed that one out of five e-cigarette users is actually aged between 10 to 19 years old. So it's not a small issue and part of the harm reduction argument should really look at initiation of uh, teen addiction. Uh, next slide, please. Teens are attracted to not only the design of the high-tech products and the devices, but also to the way the products are used and marketed as shown here. Next slide. And also the use of flavors um, attracts youths. Uh, the this quote that you see at the top of the screen is about cigarette flavors um, way back in 1972. But the pictures you see are of honey, uh, which are used in e-cigarette uh, e-juice uh, marketed today. Next slide. And as of uh, a report a few years ago in a journal on marketing, there are at least 15,500 e-liquid flavors on the market. And of course, as you see, many of these appeal to young people. Next slide. E-cigarettes, uh, when marketed uh, and advertised, also portray coolness, success, and fun, um, which are, of course, attributes that the young people like uh, are attra that attract them. Next slide. Social media influencers have also been used to promote ICOs. Um, clearly, we don't expect uh, you know, old folks to be influenced by social media influencers. Next slide. And the you know, marketing tactics are reminiscent of how cigarettes are marketed. So here you see on the left, traditional cigarette marketing. On the right, Ensign HTPs being marketed. Um, these are showing uh, product ambassadors or promo girls. Next slide. And at point of sale, you also see advertisements and price discounts. Next slide. So the way they're marketed uh, clearly um, and, and designed is appealing to youths, a huge problem. Um, and then the industry, um, while making claims that uh, these are products that help smokers to quit, Officially, no manufacturers actually made the claim that their products are cessation products. Okay. Um, they say they are switching products, and even though they are marketed as helping people to quit smoking. Um, so I don't know if you see the double speak, but I'm trying to mimic what the industry says. Okay. Next slide. Um, so uh, dual use is common. This was identified earlier. And so it negates the benefits of possibly lower exposures. Next slide. And you see um, in the UK, uh, sorry, this is Japan, um, while smoking rates have declined over the years, in the years that ICOs and other heated tobacco products have been on the market, there's been no drop, significant drop um, from uh, people quitting smoking. Next slide. In the UK, where the government promotes ends for cessation, the yellow line shows you the up, up, abrupt increase in e-cigarette use for quitting, uh, but the decline in smoking rates uh, has remained fairly constant. Uh, that's the blue line. Next slide. And in re the recent pandemic uh, months, um, last year, um, massive number of uh, people quit smoking in the UK, but the, not due to e-cigarette use as shown in this graph. Okay, next slide. So let me quickly show you what uh, is happening in the Philippines. So the basis for regulation should be, of course, effects on health and harms to health. Uh, next slide. And the next slide. So in terms of taxation, we actually tax products to reduce their affordability and discourage use, right? Next slide. But the Philippines um, law um, that taxes e-cigarettes e and heated tobacco products puts the tax rates at a very low rate for these products. So clearly, 
we're shifting people possibly to these other products rather than helping them to quit. Okay, next slide. For smoke-free environments, we want to protect people from exposure to toxins. Uh, but next slide. While uh, that's uh, the aim, the industry is continuing to lobby for indoor use, which we know uh, is bad for your health, whether that's conventional or new products due to exposure to toxins. Okay. Next slide. For packaging, we want to reduce the attractiveness of tobacco products and increase awareness of health harms. Next slide. Um, with cigarettes, we had very attractive packaging. Next slide. That did not show the truth. Okay, these are health warnings now that we have. Next slide. And it took us 24 years to get those graphic health warnings or pictorial health warnings. Next slide. And yet they're not the best practice. They're not the largest in the world, which are which belong to Timor Leste. Okay, next slide. And they don't have standardized packaging, which we already see in Thailand and in Singapore, coupled with the large health warnings. Okay, next slide. Our current law actually requires pictorial health warnings for e-cigarettes, but the industry is now lobbying to remove that requirement and have text-only warnings. And it's also firmly against standardized packaging. And these policies are actually in place already in other countries, as you see on the screen, New Zealand, Israel, and Korea. Next slide. Marketing of these products, uh, we know it should be banned because it promotes the products. And also, we want, by banning them, we re reduce attractiveness and denormalize their use. Next slide. Um, there are partial restrictions currently on regular tobacco products, cigarettes, and the industry is lobbying for similar partial restrictions on ENS and HTPs. But in addition, they are also lobbying for allowing online marketing, even though they claim this is not intended for non-smokers or minors. Okay, next slide. And on ban on sales to youths, we want everybody agrees that uh, no, no youths should be smoking. Uh, next slide. While our current law sets the minimum age at 21 years currently for ENS and HTPs, the industry is lobbying to revert that back to 18 because they claim, well, cigarettes are still allowed to be sold to those uh, above 18. So why are we different for ENS and HTPs rather than raising the age for cigarettes, right? They want to reverse the age for ENS and HTPs. Kind of weird, but that's the way they're working at the moment. And the law also limits flavors to plain tobacco and menthol, but the industry is lobbying to reverse that and allow many more flavors, okay? even though they say not for youths. Okay, next slide. And our history shows us that even though a local, one of our local governments wanted to promote a tobacco-free generation where people, young people born after the year 2000 would never smoke uh, they, and were, would never be allowed to be sold cigarettes, they were actually sued by the tobacco industry. Okay? Um, so go figure. Next slide. And finally, um, the law already mandates our Food and Drug Administration to be the lead regulator for ANS and HTPs. And the industry is lobbying heavily to change this so that it's the Department of Trade and Industry, which is friends with the industry, to be the lead regulator. And they've actually been on a media campaign to discredit the FDA and say it was anti-tobacco industry and being unfair and too, um, being too restrictive. Okay. So next slide. Let me close then to say that when the industry says they're after, they want to have a smoke-free world and they're not um, willing to stop making cigarettes, and in addition, they're make, uh, saying you know, people should switch to e-cigarettes, I think that's highly questionable. Okay, next slide. Please beware, they are a, a wolf in, in sheep's clothing. The smoke-free future is not really the, the smoke-free future that we want. It's a smoke-free future that will sustain addiction because it will sustain their profits and reduce industry liability. So next slide. If there's further reading, I would recommend it's these position papers by the European Respiratory Society and the Thoracic Society of uh, Australia and New Zealand, which looks at the science and tells us how these products should be regulated. Uh, next slide. 
Thank you very much. Do not be fooled by the tobacco industry. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, fascinating um, input. Thank you uh, so much for that. And uh, so Dr. Dorotheo gives a very uh, a clear message from his perspective. I think for me, there's uh, so many questions that have arisen out of the four inputs today. All contributors, I'm sure, come in with their inputs with a view to how can we encourage and promote the health and well-being of people uh, in a world where we have um, this uh, development from cigarettes into uh, vaping and e-cigarettes. And we've seen some very interesting questions being raised. Um, I suppose one of the slides that was just used in the last presentation, does reduced dose, dose mean reduced harm? Um, is that a key question? Uh, are we always talking about the same thing when we talk about e-cigarettes or vaping? And is it the product? Uh, and uh, do we are we clear that we're talking about one concept of, of e-cigarettes? Or is there a whole range of different things within that? We talked about nicotine content and the different contents of, uh, of, of e-cigarettes. Um, is it a root cessation? Um, is it about regulation? Um, is it about harm reduction? Is it a gateway drug into other more sinister, or if there are such things, or is it there are more sinister drugs than, than what tobacco and nicotine can use? Um, so a whole range uh, of questions raised, and of course different research looking into this whole issue and coming up with some different outcomes in terms of the studies. So much to ponder on and think about and to actually inspire one to go and look a little bit more into this issue. Perhaps I can just raise one or two of the questions um, that have come through um, and ask perhaps just for a very short input. We're already at an hour and a half. We give ourselves 10 to 15 minutes for some of these questions. So short answers from our speakers. Um, first question, what, what is our speaker's view of harm reduction in relation to e-cigarettes? Could I ask for any uh, comments, please? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have a shot. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. So, <clears throat> I think there, there are many uh, points that that probably all four of the speakers agree upon. Um, you cannot trust the tobacco industry. Uh, they need to be regulated. Uh, it's very important that none of these products are available to uh, children or even under 21s. Um, yeah. And that none of these products should be considered as safe. Um, so I think we can agree on those things. Uh, my perspective on harm reduction is that if, you know, as it seems so far, the data seems to be pretty clear that if we're just talking about electronic nicotine e-cigarettes, they deliver far, far lower levels of harm, harmful toxicants than cigarettes do. And so, my view is that um, they should be allowed to compete with cigarettes uh, and allow smokers to switch um, and as a result reduce the harm to public health. We've seen that happen with other products like in Sweden. We've seen many, many men in Sweden switch to a form of smokeless tobacco called snus. So they've transferred their addiction from cigarettes uh, to, to snus, and we've seen a, an improvement in public health in that country for men uh, due to that. E-cigarettes have a similar potential, as long as they're properly regulated. Um, and I think your point about the language that we use is very important, because when I talk about an e-cigarette, I'm not talking about a product that has marijuana in it. 
I'm not talking about a product that has cocaine in it. The, you know, just like when we used when when we didn't have these products, if somebody was smoking a cigarette, they're smoking a cigarette with nicotine. If somebody's smoking a joint, they're smoking another product that has another chemical in it, THC. So I I agree that that. I, I personally completely agree with the point that we need to be very, very careful about what what chemicals are being emitted by these products. But we should be careful with our terminology. An e-cigarette e -cigarette or an electronic nicotine delivery system is a kind of technical term for it. That's a product that delivers nicotine. And that has been shown to be able to help smokers to get off of cigarettes. And e-cigarettes appear to deliver far lower harmful chemicals. So I see that as a potential. But the, to me, the, the medium term goal for like the public health goal is that they can temporarily replace cigarettes, replace smoke products. If these can be satisfying to smokers, there's no reason for people to smoke anymore. Then we can have a, an e-cigarette industry for a while and and after after we after we've got rid of cigarettes then then we have to question well why should people have to inhale nicotine into their bodies at all we can have smoke we can have nicotine pouches and then we can have no nicotine but right now cigarettes are the dominant product in almost every country in the world over 90% of tobacco sales in the world are from cigarettes, the most harmful kind. And so I see e-cigarettes a potential pathway away from the terrible harms caused by cigarettes. Thank you, Dr. Fowles. Interesting. Anyone would like to give a brief comment uh, on, on that question, harm reduction? Is it a route to cessation? Hi, so this is Koka. I just wanted to say that for me, as uh, as a person who works with uh, uh, to you know people who need help with their tobacco addiction and just you know reading the research also and having my own professional opinion, any harm is harm, whether it was less or high. And um, also, I say that we know that um, most of the consumers of the tobacco are people with mental health illnesses. And they do uh, use nicotine and tobacco in general to help with their other symptoms. For example, people who are in methadone treatment for opioid addiction, we know that they, they, they have their cigarette break at the same time where they have their methadone because they because it, 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 it potentiates the effect of methadone on them. So um, that's why I think it's important to understand why people rely on nicotine and what does it do for them and is it underlying uh, health, mental health problems and that's where I think we need to be attacking the root of the problem. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I think you raise a range of other questions and issues of debate there, which is again fascinating once one opens up the discussion. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next question, uh, given time. Uh, this comes uh, 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 and says our third speaker, Harry, uses the term and vaping. This is an industry created term. It makes the product and the action of sucking on it sound nice and socially acceptable. Let's go and vape, or what's your favorite flavor to vape, etc. We as tobacco control advocates and activists should refrain from using industry terms, sucking on or using electronic devices or electronic nicotine delivery systems is preferable. Um, any reaction or comment to that request? Uh, I, I commented on that in my presentation, um, Jeff, and you know it's it's true. Vaping sounds so innocuous, uh, but really it's inhaling a toxic uh, dose of chemicals. So people need to know that they're in actually inhaling harmful stuff, and so vaping doesn't help. And um, I actually sometimes tell people it's an electronic form of smoking, so you're still inhaling harmful chemicals, maybe at a lower dose but there's still harmful chemicals, including carcinogens and other uh, toxicants. And so the question of does it actually reduce harm, 
um, is to me still quite debatable, um, particularly if we consider all the other things uh, related to quote unquote vaping, right? Uh, there's the teen issue. Uh, there's also the long-term studies that we still don't have. Um, and there's uh, also the risk of using these devices for illegal substances, which then creates an, another whole set of problems. So, um, uh, yeah, I would agree with uh, those comments. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to add to that? I, I guess I just have the question. If, I don't mind what it's called at all. Um, but, I mean, you have to consider that the people who do it have their own terms for it. I know, so so what was the term that's been recommended? And, you know, and it has to be a term that's kind of doesn't have 350 syllables. What's the term that's being recommended for, for the action of inhaling on an ESIG? Okay, I'm not given that answer to that one, but... That's a, the question I think uh, is reflected back and is an important one in terms of, again, about the terms and terminology we use at all levels. It is very important and they need to be clear as to what those terms mean and what uh, what they give in terms of the perspective of, of the substance and, and how people behave. Another question here, in respect to the second presentation, could the e-juice for kids be explained a little bit further? Dr. Shoshani, you raised the e-juice for kids? Yeah, so the e-juice is the uh, liquid nicotine used in all these uh, electronic devices. And just like all other presenters pointed out, you know, they come in uh, lots of lots of flavors and there's a good reason for them to be to come in, in flavors because that's what kids want to experience they want to see all these flavors what they're about they sense the flavor they taste the flavor they smell the flavor so in their perception it is not harmful it is good for them so no matter what we say as a public health professionals they will not believe us they will trust their own uh, senses um, I don't know if I answered that question. So, and I think also Dr. Pulse uh, mentioned that in his slides on what e-juice is exactly uh, composed of. Okay. Should any other comments on that, please? Um, well, the question was about um, children's e-juice. I mean, there, there is no, there is no, there is no, no children's ages, but there are flavors that are being sold around the world that, by their very name and the and the nature of their flavors, it's really not hard to imagine that the manufacturer is intending to market these to young people. You know, thing, things like candy floss or or silly names, unicorn fart, and silly names like that. Uh, I, I, so there's no doubt that some of these products have been marketed towards young people, you know, on, you know, children, teenagers, um, and I totally agree that that's that's totally wrong, and manufacturers should be banned from doing that. There should be regulations about the any kind of um, marketing they're they're allowed to do, that, and it should be the thing. My own opinion about that, and I don't know if it'll ever happen or whether it's practical is that in countries that have national surveys of product use, like cigarettes and e-cigs and things, the, the, there is the, like United States does, so there is a possibility you could tell manufacturers that if your e-cigarette ends up having a higher market share in under 18s or under 21s than in over 21s, then we will take it off the market. You will be banned. Okay, and to me that would be a simple way to to regulate it, because the because the companies themselves would have to say, oh man, we bet we better do everything we can to make sure our products do not get into the hands of children. Whereas right now they don't seem to be uh, 
scared enough to do that. So I think we need some some solid regulation, both in the United States and and around the world. Thank you. I'm going to draw the session to a close now, though we've had a range of, of other questions, which I'm sure people who have asked those questions would like to follow up with them. Uh, we will try and find answers, or I'm sure you will get uh, other answers um, from those who have been good enough to contribute today. Uh, there is, it's an early uh, phase of our understanding of the whole phenomenon of e-cigarettes. Uh, and as can been shown, there's a, a different research, different views, different arguments about the phenomenon. I, I think I'm at least reassured that those debates and questions are going on now, rather than waiting for another uh, 30, 40 years as we did with tobacco and allowed it to take hold and at least the debate is on uh, as it is around the whole issue of drug use and how can we both prevent uh, uh, the harmful use of drugs and, and promote health and well-being and, and stop people using substances that cause them more harm than good. Um, can I just thank the uh, audience for giving their time today to listen to the inputs can I make a particular thank you to our four presenters today who've given their time freely to contribute to a very interesting and ongoing debate, uh, which really appreciated by ISOP in our wish to open up these debates of very important issues in drug demand reduction. Uh, and can I encourage you to sign up for the third uh, seminar, which will take place on May the 31st, um, which we hope will a look at other issues around the issue of tobacco, including perhaps the most important issue, how can we look at the area of prevention? So thank you for your time. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you to our speakers. We look forward to joining with you in the future and for continuing this very important debate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.